where I had dropped off of Facebook for a while. And then mm. when I came back, uh, all my friends were gone. So uh, that, that's probably what happened. I, w- I was uh, up out of Facebook for like six months. No, and you got married recently? Uh, no, I've, I've been married, um, but, uh, you know, since the last time we talked, uh, I was uh, actually, we were uh, trying to start a family. So uh, we, we since then started a family and uh, now my daughter is 12 years old. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for getting in touch. Um, You were asking what remote job is and what difference it is than freelancing. So basically it's similar, but it's a job. You know, our institution and the educational institutions all prepare us for a job, not for freelancing and not for contracting, not for entrepreneurship in general. So a lot of people in this part of the world where I am in Pakistan are also seeking jobs. And when we, when I tell them to do freelancing, when I tell them that they can, you know, be their own boss, they don't really want to be, they are happy to get a check end of the month, no matter what happens. Um, So what I'm now focused on is helping them get remote jobs. Um, Since COVID, a lot of people are open to this idea but it's a problem on both ends the employer doesn't know that they can hire really low and low 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 price staff overseas and how to find them and the employee doesn't know that he doesn't have to take very little money in inside our own country uh, and they can work online in another country so um, infrastructure wise in pakistan you can get unlimited band unlimited broadband on your phone for four dollars a month with unlimited cell phone minutes so it's very very low price wise and it's very high speed it's like 130 megabyte on your phone Um, so it's it's pretty high speed and it's pretty much unlimited with like 50 gigabyte of bandwidth on your phone for just five four dollars a month and then um I started a project which is called OLPP, where I give laptops for anyone who wants to take one for $4 a month. So anybody who doesn't own a laptop can take a laptop from me for $4 a month um, on installments. And then I started an institution where people can come and learn how to do a remote job. So we train them with the culture, we train them uh, with the norms on how to interact, how to use social media in a better way. Um, and how do you, you know, how does the people live? How do people live in the US? Uh, just a little bit formal introduction and then so that they can get acquainted because they don't really have friends. This Pakistan's official language is English. Uh, so you don't have problem in language. Uh, oh, but wow. But a lot of people don't speak. Um, We all studied English in school, but we don't speak English when we are talking among friends. We're speaking uh, another national language. So Pakistan has 20-something official languages. And one of them is English. So, um, you know, writing English is not a problem, but sometimes you stutter because you're not, you're not, you don't have, you know, you are, kind of um, intimidated by a person of another nationality because you don't really know them. So uh, so my job here is I'm trying to uh, break this barrier for the last many years, basically. So to allow this arbitrage to happen where you can get a programmer for instead of $100,000 a year, you can get it for $1,000 a month. Uh, and then you can take it up from there. And instead of contract work, uh, you hire low-end people, but you train them. I mean, you if you hire an intern, eventually they will become uh, very good for you in, in a couple of months because they will pick up stuff. You're asking them to order a pizza for you or order an Uber for you, or they become like a physical, real Alexa for you. But 
uh, it's a real human being on the other end where you can ask on WhatsApp or Messenger to do your job. But they are also graduates from universities. Um, the only problem is that in our own country, they, um, they don't have jobs which can pay them, you know, a couple of hundred dollars a month even. So I'm trying to pick up these people who are already hired by other companies and snatch them and put them in U.S. companies and English companies um, just so that they can make double or triple or qu you know, quadruple their salaries. Um, so that's what I'm trying to crack here. And it's, uh, it's a very populous country. It's 250 million human beings. Wow. And that's, uh, and I, you know, I have, I have quite a following on social media, so I want to kind of crack this code and make this happen for millions of people. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not very keen on the creating more software at the moment i'm right i think the world is changing at a very very rapid pace and people are unable to adapt to the new world and it's uh there's a huge opportunity after chat gpt for people to learn very quickly but they want a better paycheck they want um they want more money for what they're doing right and as i was explaining you can hire a good mba with experience for five hundred dollars a month, uh, which is which is very very low uh, oh, yeah. for for American employer, and sometimes the American employer says, "I can't pay that low because I'm not doing justice to them." But at the same time, the the call it the standard of living allows this person to have a good life in that amount of money. I'm not saying that they should keep on working for five hundred dollars. I think they should be earning more. But they should start, they should, you know, nudge up from $100 to $200 to, to $500. For them, it's already double. So I am dealing with double-edged sword because the employer in the U.S. says it's too low and the Pakistani employee says it's too high. So both sides don't believe me. So I really don't know how to fix this. Uh, but it's, it's something which is there. And, I, I, you know, I'm going to keep on trying till it gets fixed. So this is what I'm up to. Okay. Okay. Well, um, let me ask you a question. How, um, how does payment work? So, uh, you know, w when you've negotiated the rates, then how does say, you know, uh, somebody in the U S pay somebody, you know, from Pakistan to, uh, to, to do the work? So every person who you will hire will have a U.S. account number with a company called Payoneer. And you just, they get a U.S. bank account number. You just send them weekly check uh, to their bank account. And then it, within, within 24 hours, they get it locally in Pakistan. Uh, if some employer wants to hire somebody in the U.S. Uh, and wants to pay an employer, like a company or a uh, person so they can hire me or my company and I can then pay check I can transfer the money to the local employees that's also possible both ways are possible so I have a few companies in the US who you can hire and then we will hire for you and we will act as a payroll master for you uh, okay okay this is uh, very very interesting to me <laughs> um, how uh, you, you you mentioned that the uh, local cellular providers there are now providing unlimited bandwidth um, and and for a very low cost. Um, how it, uh, I guess well this, I guess this question should be in two parts. One is what uh, what kind of bandwidth are they getting for that for that rate? And are they uh -huh. it's a 4G connection. A 4G you get like, so it's 130 megabit and uh, you know it's pretty pretty pure bandwidth. The ping time is 50 millisecond to the US. Um, and then the they lock it, the fair usage is 50 gigabytes. 
and then they can pay another four dollars for another 50 gigabytes which is again extremely cheap compared to back in the us oh wow okay i see okay uh and then and then that that bandwidth is like they can network that with their uh computer or or laptop like you said that you you, you would provide them yeah, most of the people I'm recruiting have a laptop or a computer. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, you can create a hotspot on your phone and then you can use it through that way. Or you can get a fiber connection. You The fiber connection starts at $5 a month to $10 a month. It's not, it's not very expensive also. Um, and then you can, I mean, half a gigabyte, I mean, 500 meg is around hundred dollars a month uh, that is what i have at my home so it's uh, it's cheaper it's more expensive than starlink but it's starlink is um, is apparently going to start soon so that's going to be around 60 dollars a month for a starlink connection with two gigabyte bandwidth oh wow <laughs> okay um wow that's incredible uh so i guess then the the cost of the cost of that stuff really could be uh, just forwarded to say the the uh, hiring person here in the U.S. Right? Normally, you don't, but it's up to you. You know, as for if you haven't really started doing it, but as things go forward, uh, you know, I have employees in my in my company starting from hundred dollars a month to a thousand dollars a month or and they take commissions around four to five thousand dollars a month that's very high end for them uh, but back in the us it's not very high end we couldn't so didx has been around for 15 years now almost 18 years now and it couldn't have survived because if we were not having operations in pakistan because we operated at a very low cost um, you know, and, and I, right now I'm in a process of trying to sell it. And the, my biggest challenge is that, the, that my revenue is so low that they think it's not worth it for them to even talk to us, but it's very profitable at the same time, because, uh, we operate at a very low cost of doing business. We not, we are not situation. Our staff is not in California where I have to pay $200,000 a year. Um, so my staff works at, you know, almost nothing, um, less than even one employee in the U.S. In, in California, for sure. So I'm trying to take advantage of that arbitrage. And for this purpose, I'm going to be spending some time in, in Bay Area, trying to make good connections and trying to get the right price going. And, you know, I want to I want to do at least a million people. I mean, million is nothing. It's not even 1% of the country. So I want to scale. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to keep on trying. I've been on, I have been after this since, since I remember. I mean, I mean, I invented the DID number for this purpose so I can live in Pakistan and work in the U.S. Right, that's, right. that's how I, my whole journey started. Um, and then the I, 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 I got the licensing for call centers in Pakistan and I, I trained a lot of people on call center business and BPO and all that. And now with remote job, you know, with ba so much bandwidth available to every home, you basically can work from home, just like back in the States. Right. Oh, wow. Um, so what kind of challenges you said you wanted to scale? What kind of challenges are you are you are you experiencing? When you haven't got married, you don't know how to get married. It's simple as that. You just don't know what you don't know. I, it, I don't know. I don't. I am not in recruitment business. I have not been in HR business. Right. Uh, I, it's a new business for me altogether. Uh, to, to, to. How do you scale? How do you get a million people jobs? How do you get ten million people jobs? How do you get fifty million people jobs? That's. Uh, and of people of totally different descent and people with different mindset 
So I'm I'm trying with one niche, which is the interns, because I've I've found that the employer in the U.S. is having problem in hiring people because he doesn't get these people. These people don't show up on time. These people don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they're like, you say something, you say tomato, I say tomato. You know, this, those of the things happen. And uh, but same thing over here. It's a huge um, cultural difference. I mean, I think it takes a few months to adapt to for a person to work together. It's like dating. But right. if you don't date, you just get mad at it's a challenge. Uh, back in the States, you don't. But in Pakistan, you just get mad at You don't right. get to date. You just get a girl or a boy, and then you get mad at And then you you learn to adapt. So here, people are looking for a job, and they want to learn while they're working on the job, I think. And um, I think now with this technology, it's possible for us to kind of connect and I, I want to become that bridge where or make a lot of bridge. I want to help at least a hundred companies do this. So that, you know, like Steven can have his own company hiring people from Pakistan and uh, recruiting them and placing them in the States, who whichever industry you choose to. So I'm trying to create this system where a lot of people can just do this. I, I will be happy to guide you through this or get you the staff or whatever you need, because it's something which I'm very excited about and I want to solve this problem. I, I don't like it where people get nothing for doing the same job here. And then you get so much more back in the States for doing the exact same job. Right. I don't think it's fair. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand. Yeah. You, you're, you're right. Um, it's uh, leveling the playing field. And, uh, I'm all about competition. I, you know, I believe in competition and, and, um, you know, uh, it, it seems like a very viable idea for sure. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in it because at the same time, you know, I have been, I'm one of those people, uh, competition is so stiff here. So, uh, and what I mean by competition being stiff is if if you have anything remotely close to somebody else's idea, uh, the first one to the money is really going to be the winner. So, you know, I, I, I started off our conversation by mentioning a topic that is really... Uh, it's untouched because it was something it, it and, and it actually morphed into the topic that it is now because the conversation started 20 some odd years ago with this company being the only voice over Wi-Fi company at that time. They were the only ones doing it. And uh, today, uh, I know this because I was a part of the acquisition. Uh, I don't want to say the company, but um, I, I survived two acquisitions. And uh, that company that started that topic of voice over Wi-Fi and monopolized the uh, industry that it got into to market voice over Wi-Fi to, which was the medical industry, is gone. That company is gone. They 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 could not survive the pandemic, and uh, even though they were a one point three billion dollar company, um, they couldn't survive the pandemic. Uh, their their business was very very focused on keeping people working at the site, uh, keeping them you know. Uh, walking around the hospitals, doing voice roaming tests and that sort of thing, uh, testing the Wi-Fi connections and checking for dead spots, and then working with uh, Wi-Fi radio manufacturers like Cisco or Cisco Meraki uh, and, and integrating their uh, system with, with those, those Wi-Fi uh, systems. So... 
Um, this is really interesting because the last, and I can tell you firsthand that I was working remotely for said company because of the pandemic, uh, working remotely and doing everything that they were, that, that an engineer is supposed to do on site. I was doing remotely. So I had to be creative about coming up with the types of tests, uh, working with people who were authorized to uh, roam a, a hospital facility, staying in contact with the engineer that would, you know, pretty much uh, conduct all the testing and and um, and and validation for the for the software and the solution that we were put, putting in. So. Um, I have all of that experience that I could, I could, you know, bring to the table and, and talk about with you and, and, um, you know, uh, train, train folks at a lower cost, um, and be able to still fulfill those, uh, those jobs, those things that need to be done. And then, that could actually turn things around here where the role of an engineer could, uh, you know, that would have to go on a hospital site could actually be conducted by somebody at the capacity that you're taught that, that you're working with, you know, remotely in Pakistan could conduct the engineer to do all the on-site work, but still have a, you know, mainly like a, like an implementations engineer, which is what I was doing. So, um, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's, this is really interesting to me because, like I said, this is it's intriguing, uh, and, and um, I mean, uh, we could, we could. Uh, I, I, there's already a market for this, so I mean, I so I, I know I know where to go with this right off the bat to, uh, to go take it to and, and, uh, introduce it to. So very, very. So, so sleep on it. Think about it. Um, what, as I was saying, I think that the best way to do this is, uh, because I want to do scale is to do, is to do McDonald's model where you keep it simple and you have only three items on the menu and then you just say you know what i am i'm not in it for higher margins i'm here for the quantity i want you to come in get out as soon as possible uh come, you know get in get out and that's why i'm very focused on interns personally speaking because i have a lot of people i have i'm inter i like while doing this this People are typing in that I want a job, I want a job. It's like people are like thousands of people. So I'm very keen on placing them for a very low price so that they can get trained to do almost ridiculous, mediocre jobs, which I have already ended in the U.S. If you remember, if you watch any old movie or any old TV sitcom, you will see an assistant or a secretary but they're all gone. There are no assistants anymore or a whole room full of human beings. It's all gone. But I am interested in recreating that reality because now you can have someone, you can have the luxury of hiring someone for a couple of hundred dollars a month to do your small little mediocre jobs, um, which for them is not mediocre. For them, it's a job and they're earning good money for it. And you don't do it anymore because it's not affordable anymore to hire a secretary. Can you get me a coffee? Can you get me this? Can you get me that? You don't do that anymore. You just get up and go and do it because now it's out of the culture altogether. But all right. of a sudden, with all this technology, you can do that again, all over again. So, for example, I, I have around seven assistants. Who has seven assistants? Nobody has seven assistants. But I just keep them on board because they're, they're constantly being trained. They are learning all the time. They are becoming mini-me. And then they okay. become project managers. They, 
they it's like i was telling my my brother today that you need to hire 10 new assistants and you do, don't you think of them as your cousins or your children you don't you don't think of them as employees they're just learning they're there to learn slowly 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 and they become you and then you can grow and expand your empire or do whatever you want but that's not possible in the us you can't do that at 15 dollars an hour but at but at 30 cents an hour you can do that it's a very different game ball game whole changes if you if you do that and i have and because they are so low low priced they're not going to be very skilled so everybody comes and tells me can they do this can they do that no they can't do anything they're just english speaking human beings who have chat gpt who can do whatever you ask them to do but at a slower pace because they have never done it before but they can learn and you can fire them if they don't perform in a week's time very simple you don't get sued by them you don't get a lawsuit by them it's a very different world you it's like a protective shield you have of hiring these people it's a new it's a new world and within this new world you will have to create new rules right now there are no rules around this so you can take advantage of of all this like when the internet started there were no rules when the telecom started there were no rules it's just a new reality which we can take advantage of and i don't think we should i mean getting taking advantage i don't mean it in a negative connotation i just mean that it's a new reality and it's uh, you know it's like when china was making everything for the us it's now a different game but right now this is something which is uh, an instant job for a pakistani and an instant staff for an american and you can hire i can give you five people for 500 dollars a month and they can do whatever you want them to do and it's 500 dollars a month five human beings at your service 9 hours a day i mean you can do whatever you want them to do. you can just hire them to learn you can say you know what i'm not i'm this is what you have to learn every day and then i'm going to talk to you only for 30 minutes a day for all of you together it's just a new reality it's a to play with and you know and tweak it to to get something it's like inventing a new technology you know it's just a new way which you can do things it, i mean you're already thinking i can train them to do the wifi thing voice over wifi thing and all that thing yes you can but that will take time for them to learn right it's like it's like asking them to learn in french or chinese or japanese and it's going to just take time it's it they will learn not everybody will learn but they can learn and you have to filter through the process and then there are people who you can hire at a higher so first you just sleep on this idea we will talk again uh, as many times as you want because i am also in the refining process of this but right now i'm looking for people who are who are uh, willing to partner with me i am willing to help them start with this side of the world their website their staffing their understanding and then i want different people to hire people in different spaces i have a friend who has who is hiring hiring uh, only personal assistants for people but he trains them first but then he sells them for 2500 a person and wow. he he pays around 500 to 1000 but now you have a very very well trained personal executive assistant for two and a half thousand dollars which is what um less than thirty thousand dollars a year which you right. will never find which you will never find in the united states i mean a phenomenal young energetic human being very fluent you know much advanced that people who are working so uh, these are the i mean this is just the arbitraging the distance and this guy is is doing around nine million dollars a year in business which is not bad for yeah. for for us for a guy who is working out of his roof um <laughs> so it's something which is available uh but it's it's not it's we have to you know it's like when the internet was starting we have to just play with it and see where it goes right um <laughs> very interesting um so 
that opens up like a so so it opens up a whole i guess um uh because it's so new and and you know you i mean so like i've been using chat gpt uh to you know uh kind of synthesize my thoughts you know mainly on coding you know and 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 uh other things too like uh process you know uh process um i guess uh creating processes and workflows uh and that that's what i had to do you know they uh, when i was at my old company they wanted me to be more of um they elevated my role and said, Hey, okay, you got to start doing this on top of your other things that, that you're supposed to do in your role. And I didn't want to do that because that meant that I would have to, you know, drop off of, of my production, my productive time, my production time to come up with those new ideas for workflows and processes that they were asking me to do. Um, so I guess, you know, where I'm going with this is, is trying to understand how, I guess that would be like, a, a, it would be up to the, the customer to have like an onboarding process and then know uh, exactly what the role is going to entail so that the the um, the person would be uh, trained on on handling that role. Is that is that what I'm understanding? I'm. Are you in Austin or are you in Dallas? I am in I'm in Dallas Fort Worth. I'm actually in Fort Worth, so right outside of Dallas. I will drop you a number of a gentleman who was in Dallas, but now he's in Austin. He, okay. I guided his partner around a year ago, and he um, now is making ten thousand dollars a month off this business. And he is—I uh, mean, you can just call him. He is very happy to guide others. He has only fourteen employees at the moment, and okay. he is only recruiting people who are digital marketeers. And then he is selling digital marketeers who are very good at Facebook or a certain task at Facebook, like digital ads, Facebook ads, blah, 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 whatever. So I think the way this will roll out to be what I have my gut feeling is that we have to select a very micro niche or a niche of, of job that we think we can find you in your end, you can find employers at, and then you can ask me, can we find this person a lot of in larger quantity or a small quantity, whatever quantity you think you will be placing. So as I said, this guy is only having 14 employees in six months. Um, so my interest here is to find people like yourself who are interested in this business and then walk them through this process guide them through this process, help them build a website for this, find a niche, and then partner with them to supply them the human beings from this side, and then they can sell them on the other side. And then you go out and perfect your niche, and then you look for another niche in a similar space or expand on that niche. Uh, uh, for example, there is a gentleman in Canada what he has done, he has created a point of sale device. When a customer walks in at McDonald's, hello, welcome to McDonald's. And then the guy on the other side is on a screen, but he's sitting in Lahore, Pakistan. And he has now 500, 600 uh, receptionists or cashiers uh, taking orders for McDonald's and stuff like that, sitting in another country altogether. Um, that's a niche right. he found. So uh, another friend of mine, as I was saying, has a niche for a personal assistant. Another friend of mine has niche where he sells uh, social media experts only to social media experts. Like 
If you remember, DIDX was only selling numbers to telcos. So similarly, he's only dealing with the expert so that when the customer comes, he doesn't have to deal with a guy who doesn't really understand what he's talking about. So I think you should sleep on it two days, one day, and then think that I, I can see you're getting excited about it as an entrepreneur, but you need to you need to find your niche or micro niche where we can find you the first few employees and then you can place them and then you can dig into your own pocket and hire an assistant for yourself or I can give you one of my students to just work for you four hours a day just to play around and see what they can do for you. Um, but they are not expert in anything, right? That's that's the, that's the space I want to start at, like basic interns who can fetch water for you, fetch that paper for you, fetch whatever they want to, you want to get fetched over online, right? Um, have, right? have me hang out with them, have a conversation with them, uh, blah, 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 whatever, you know, just a couple of hours a day, uh, brainstorm with them, do chat GPT together with them. Um, so that's, that's, that's the place I want to start because I have thousands of those. And people think that they know things, but the thing which is the, the most difficult in our country is that people, most people are not punctual. A lot of people are not punctual. A lot of people are not, they don't know how to say no. They don't know how to listen. Those right. small little things which a young, I mean, if you hired a 16 year old or you will have similar issues in the US. So McDonald's somehow would learn how to iron them out. So I have to learn that how to iron these out in these people uh, because they have to go through this discipline, this this large conveyor belt of human beings, you know, like all of a sudden we have a lot of supply at a lower end, but at the price, but also the quality is uh, is a little low, which they need to be trained. They need to unlearn what they know and then we need to relearn what you want to tell them. Look, this is not how it works in the United States. This is how not how we work. You you say nine o'clock, you come at nine o'clock, you come at nine, eight fifteen, you come at whatever. You know, like you have to transform them. And it's not like they're bad people. It's just that they're trained in a different way. Right. right. So, so I have been trying to get this right for twenty years, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and it's it's still not working out. But I'm 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 I'll keep on trying to get have this you, done. Um. Have you done personality tests? Like, have you gotten into, um, well, uh, a lot of HR businesses and, and um, uh, departments are making, in, you know, I mean, that's it's somebody who is going into a, a, a calibrated uh, role, meaning there's a specific skill set that they have to do and and uh there's a reliance on certain qualities uh for their candidates that they're looking for and then they usually make the candidates take a uh like a personality test or uh some kind of um cognitive gauge to where they are you know like like i know nurses do it because my wife uh, you know, she, she's a nurse and, um, every time she, you know, they, they actually make them take, uh, these, these surveys every so often. And then the other thing too, is like, um, these surveys or these, uh, personality tests are done by like Gartner and, and people like that. Have you looked at, at that? You can do Myers-Briggs testing. You can do the 16 type testing. You can get an IQ test done. You can get a TOEFL test done, whatever you want to get done. But you have to know what you're hiring for. Are you hiring for a, uh, first we have, you have to decide what job are you going to be working with? And then uh, we can do the, we can create that uh, conveyor belt process for you. Okay. But first you have to realize who are you going to hire? Like, let's let's just look at the comments over here. There are people who are there. You go. This guy, he is an architectural draftsman. He is a three D designer. He's a website designer. He's a graphic designer. He's a jet plumber. 
do you want to hire this guy? I don't want to hire this guy. He doesn't know one thing really well. He doesn't come out and say, I am excellent at web designing. That's it. But, you know, I don't want to hire that guy, but maybe you do. But then there is another guy. He's saying, I'm a UX designer. Well, I'm willing to do a remote job. Here you go. Then he's saying he's a great UX designer. But he doesn't use a clear smiling photo on his profile. I'm not going to hire him. I don't know. You know, like everybody has their own criteria of what you want and looking for, right? So once you know who is the audience you can target, Stephen, who are the people who you can go and say, hey, buddy, I'm going to give you, make your life easier. Here's an intern for you who can do, who can order a pizza for you, who can keep you on track, who can keep you on diet, who can, who you can call and, you know, have a conversation with. I don't know. I'm, I'm figuring this out right now. I'm, I think most of the people who I have hired as professional have not been at par for me. And I have always hired lower end people. I'm always good at training them. I hire a lot of people, I train them, and then I keep the good ones. And then others left, leave me anyways, because I train them too much. So that's, that's how, who I am. And it doesn't mean that's who you are. Maybe you don't, you, maybe you want to pay $200 a month extra, but then you want a guy who has an experience in something, but then you need a rigorous uh, hiring process. So I'm entering into a phase where I will be talking to a lot of HR companies in the US and in Pakistan, and I will be tweaking them for remote jobs, basically. And they're already in HR business. They know their business. I don't have to teach them how to do an HR thing. It's just that I have to connect them with the right audience, with the, they were not, they were, they were never looking for staff in Pakistan, in the U S and they're not looking for employers in the U S in Pakistan. So I just have to make that bridge. That's, that's, that's my role. Okay. And, I mean, nothing more than that. Uh, but in your case, I don't know. I just, this conversation was not supposed to happen. It just happened. So here's what I'm doing. Sleep on it. See what you can do. Play with it a little bit. Tinker with it a little bit, and see where it goes. Okay, I I will. I and um, I'll I'll be uh, actually I'll I'll come back. Uh, you you'll definitely be hearing from me again soon. So, um, but uh, when I come back to you here, just give me a couple days. Um, I'll be better prepared, and uh, and and actually, um, I've been talking to a lot of uh, folks about, because at, at the end of the day, what, what I'm trying to do is, you know, you, you mentioned it's a whole new world. So the whole new world in, as far as what I've been doing with respects to the healthcare industry, uh, it, the pandemic has definitely changed the paradigm altogether. I mean, you know, uh, um, I'll reveal the, the company to you here. Uh, the company that I used to work for was called Vocera. So Vocera Communications, V-O-C-E-R-A, Vocera Communications was the dominant and still is, I mean, but it, it's all legacy that they have uh, in there. And they're just now post pandemic trying to do uh, up, uh, updates on all the hardware and software that they couldn't do for the work that they couldn't do during the pandemic. So what does that mean? Um, well, to me, that means they're a dollar late, a day late and a dollar short. That's what I meant to say. A day late and a dollar short. They were absorbed by a very big company. Uh, the company is Stryker. That's public information, by the way. So Stryker Medical, a hundred billion dollar company, uh, gobbled them up. So uh, uh, Stryker said, "We are not assuming that name anymore, Vocera." And just recently, they uh, took down the website and everything that Vocera had that was up for Vocera.com that is essentially linked to Stryker's website. So now if you try to go to vocera.com, it's, it's a dead link. It's, it's dead. So um, to me, that means that 
the, the monopoly is over. Clinical communications is the topic that I worked on that was dominated by Vocera. And uh, that was the goal of me uh, talking to you about because uh, Greg Merriweather, um, who uh, knows you, I had a conversation with him. And as you know, you may, you may or may know him through Jeremy McNamara, who uh, developed uh, the uh, H324. Yeah, and, and some other modules for asterisk. Um, but um, Greg said to talk to you and and uh, uh, open up this this idea about clinical communications because um, I think post pandemic it needed to be open because it's been a closed topic for the last twenty three years. So um this is this is great i really appreciate the uh, collaboration and, and uh, ability to uh uh talk on a whim like this this is great and and even to share it with the rest of the, you know your uh, your network of people uh it does like you said it it will it does and it will create immense opportunities I'm just going to throw a number out there and tell you that just here in the U.S. alone, there are 1,600 hospitals or 1,600 hospital systems that run Vocera still today. And they are slowly but surely transitioning away from that technology where they want to go cloud. And I can tell you about how that is supposed to work because uh, there is... Uh, some initiatives, some public initiatives by T-Mobile and uh, some other companies where uh, they're starting to talk about replacing Wi-Fi altogether here with what they call 5G or LTEU, uh, LTE unlicensed, and uh, which is, uh, you know, cellular technology using the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz space. So wait a second. It says here, I asked Google, what is clinical communication? It says clinical communication is the exchange of information and ideas between healthcare providers and their patient. It is a two-way process in which the patient expresses their needs, wants, and concern, and the provider explains the relevant medical care and procedure and answer any questions the patient may have. Is this what it is or is this? That is, this is it. Is, yes. That, that. That's like, so for me, that sounds like it's going to be taken over by AI. No, no, we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. Um, and and yes, Stryker, uh, I, I will go as far as to say that Stryker had done an experiment with AI to, to do all that, to, to replace uh what a doctor does but we can have the doctor as a co-pilot or we can have the um, we can have the ai as a co-pilot which suggests you know this is why it's happening or this is what's happening blah 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 but no? many doctors don't want to give away their skills do you, do you understand what i'm saying they don't want to train ai they don't they uh they they are reserved on on ai and and this goes back to a i mean the, the this goes as deep as uh, a recent uh, conversation that they had at klucon between tony there was a bunch of panelists tony minasali was up there jeff pulver was up there and uh tony was kind of really quiet about uh the use of ai you know, because it's really right now, it's just depending on what the market wants versus um, uh, what, you know, producing ideas to the public about the possibilities or use cases of AI is, is it gets pretty scary because I actually worked on a project with the Department of Defense here in the U.S. where we did an experiment. And, and actually it went through as a as a an executed project where it replaced 300 call center agents 
uh, that were live working in a call center. And uh, that was not the outcome that the engineers were expecting. So in other words, we, the engineers, had the same idea that you had that, that, that uh, the AI would be a co-pilot, not so much a replacement. And the government turned around and said, we're replacing those people and fired all 300 of those people. So that wasn't the outcome I, I was hoping for uh, after, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the role that I played in it. Um, and I don't want to get into that role, kind of a role ever again. But Stephen, no matter how much we want, this is going to happen anyway. It's it's right there. It's I I don't want to say it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> only if you only if you transfer what's in here, in there, you know, and and, and you if you say it, I don't know the uh, way the way Chat GPT becomes... has been, the way Chat GPT has been working. It looks like I don't have to tell it anymore. Anything it just knows everything. It's just. It's insanely phenomenally <laughs> fantastic. It's just you don't really need to train anything anymore. It's just all there already. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. To me, that's very, very scary because it's scary, but it is what it is. I mean, it, that's what I I think the world is changing and it has changed and we're just not ready to realize it. And then we're just slow. But realizing it and then things happen have you have you tried annie by the way have you tried the annie app annie no no okay let me send it to you it'll it'll blow your mind off it's just it's a it's like grandmother of city okay and it's just uh it does everything and anything which you can ask her to do it it goes through your pdf files it goes oh, through your God. entire life's record on anything, your medical record. If you have a PDF file of your medical record, you can give it to it. You can it can peek into it, diagnose everything. It can look through what the doctor might have missed. Uh, and it's just a free app. It's not even a, it's just a simple free app right now, which has been developed by one human being. That's right. it. One guy has just it's like it's like tony it's like another tony or another mark spencer <laughs> this guy is just um and it's it's insanely phenomenal and he keeps updating it like crazy every every day i open it up there's a new feature up there and i'm like oh my god and it's just it's just insane so I, I don't know how long you can just protect things from happening but it's it is going to happen uh, well that's Yes, it will, but at what pace? Because the uh, this is a thing, and, and this is what I'm trying to preach to everybody, is that uh, you cannot, you, you should not, you should not trust everything that is, if, it, if it's not happening in reality, it's probably not trustworthy. So, you know, this is, this goes back to stuff that's going on in the CIA here, you know, they talk about uh, misinformation and disinformation. So, for example, um, it, that idea came about, so like when we were, when I was at DOD, um, they, they didn't tell us, they didn't say, hey, uh, try to train the bot, you know, to be... Um, flirtatious or give it a personality you know so some of us with dirty minds would try to uh influence the bot's outcomes by doing just that saying saying things that would be otherwise deemed inappropriate in the in the uh, conversation and eventually through enough uh um uh, engagements the bot would say okay i know what kind of person i'm dealing with or i'm dealing with you know like they they identify you as that and then for the positive outcome they would go ahead and continue with that um that rhetoric that you started so 
and and I mean, uh, of course it's all fake, but you know, making somebody feel like, oh man, I'm talking to somebody who really likes to talk about the stuff that I like to talk about, which is bad. And, and it's, it's not only bad, but it leads to misinformation. It leads to disinformation. It's not to be trusted information for sure. It's definitely stuff that if you looked at, you looked at the conversation, you'd, you, you'd see a transcript of it and you'd go, this is garbage and tear it up. <laughs> right. So, so I, have, I have been scared of AI for a very long time. And this year in March, I spent eight to 18 hours a day learning about what's going on again, all over again, since that GPT from Sam Altman and the inventor of stability and uh, Peter Diamandis and whoever I was out there uh, talking about it, trying to gulp, 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 gulp as much as I could. And then I gave up. I said, you know what? I need to just go on with my life. Whatever will happen, will happen. Um, you can't just predict anymore because this one little young man called somebody like Mark Spencer will come up with something which will disrupt everything. And you can't just stop everything because of this young man. And the fear was, was, was not worth it to live with, you know. So as you said, you don't do things based on you want to get people fired, but you do things, but it might happen. So um, I think I know you're a good person. You're not going to do something harmful. I don't want to be causing something harmful, but I, I was talking to once to a gentleman at Stanford who runs the Peace Lab. Uh-huh. And um, he was saying, you know what? I don't think... Uh, Steve Jobs designed the iPhone so that people would die on the on the on, while driving and doing texting, right? So it's not how we invent things; it it happens still. You know, people still cause harm, and a lot of people die just because they're just texting and well, driving. But but there again, AI is not anything new. It's it, the only thing that changed uh, it was the method of training the ai uh you know i think that i think the ai was not new but this this open ai api and the chat gpt thing just 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 you know when when you read about it or you you you, when you when you when you kind of find out about it google had this for last couple of years five years they say and they were not releasing it for the same reason which has happened now that the genie is out of the box. It's, you know, there's an API available and the stability guy comes in and open source everything and puts the entire world's information in two gigabyte file. It's just insane. I mean, things like that, it's just insane. It's just too it insane. insane. It's so back to the, the whole question of, of what's to be trusted because you can't, you know, as they say, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I've got a, a security certification, you know. I've got a CompTIA Security Plus, and um, one of the first things they say in the beginning of that uh, certification course is there is no such thing as real security. So, you know, you always hear everybody, and you say it too. You know, you don't know what you don't know. You know, it's uh, it, it used to be trust but verify, right? So because we see something, uh, and, and, and I think that's where everybody is stuck still, is that we're stuck in that trust but verify mentality, whereas, uh, and, and that includes everything we see online and hear online, uh, it... it, it uh, it's not going to bode well now with AI because now you're talking about AI that can generate on the fly voices. It can generate phone calls. It can emulate stuff uh, on the fly and, and just do things out of thin air. And people like, like one of the, the things, you know, the, the stories that you hear is uh, for example, you know, the whole idea of trust, but verify doesn't work with, is um, 
you've got mothers uh, who get phone calls and they they get a phone call of a kidnapper uh, saying that hey I've uh, your 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 kid is with us and we've got your kids and blah 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 and uh, um, we're we now want a ransom and then well, they, here you go you can talk to your kid no problem <laughs> huh? that? here you go you can talk to your kid no problem <laughs> yeah no they did that. They said you want to hear your kid, and then and then you hear in the background what sounds to be just like their kids going, "Mom, help! Mom, help me!" And then and then there's like you know generated sounds of of uh, uh, rustling around, and uh, the the mother now is her her emotions are are oh my god I cannot believe this is happening. Oh my God! You have my child, you know, and and it, you know, they start to panic. But uh, and and it's all disinformation. It it was it was generated by AI to cause that same emotional panic, and if anything, to get them to go to some means to pay off a, a kidnapper. Black Mirror episode one. Right, right. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's, uh, uh, do we want to live in a world like that, Rayhan? I don't. <laughs> I, got, I, I don't know what's reality anymore. I think we are entering I, into, I know what's reality. That's why I want to talk to humans. That's why I want human intervention. I, want I, think, I think in the next two, three years, it's tough to even imagine how reality would look like. The other day, uh, yesterday, two days ago, I got a voice clone. It, was, it, it took our guy half an hour. And then my you saw the school children. I, I sent you the video of the school. The school children, these 12-year kids now know how to clone voices, right. clone faces. And if they play pranks, I don't know what will happen. I mean, these kids, they are going to be unstoppable. And then that's the, and that's the new reality which is coming. And it's not, and it's not going to stop because all the, all on everything is open sourced. Everything is now available, like on this happy face, whatever the face thing is. Uh, and it's just. It's insane. You know, my son in January cloned me and gave me the bot. Here you go, dad. I asked him, you know, I'll give you 50 bucks if you can clone me. Right. And then in two hours, he cloned me and said, here you go. It's, there's, a, there's a platform out there who can just clone you like in 10 minutes. <laughs> you don't need to, you don't need to do it. Right. And this, and this kid is 14 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So... Right. I, 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 as I said, I don't want to even think about it anymore. I was in extreme stress. I, oh. I, I left the country. I, I, I just studied, 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 studied. Uh, and then up till a few years ago, I was actually honest to God. I was looking for a house to die in because that's, I was thinking like, you know, Terminator is coming and, then, you know, everything will end. So what's the point of doing anything? And then I found a, <laughs> A, a verse from Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, that if you if you see the end of the world come and you have a plant in your hand, plant it instead of waiting, instead of throwing it away, just plant it. And then my aunt told that to me in Houston a few years ago. And then since then, I was a little calmer that, OK, fine, I'll keep on doing whatever I can. Um you know, I have been blessed with a lot of things and I don't have to live in this country anymore and and do these things and try to help out people. You know, I could just make more money and just live whatever I want to do with it. But I, I stopped doing that 12 years ago and I just uh, devoted myself in trying to do whatever I can, you know, little small little pebble that I can move, uh, leave the world a better place than it I found it right so I'm not very worried about this AI thing because there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of things and they're very smart people trying to protect us also from this and I think it's beyond 
me and um, there was so much growth happening and so much information that I hired like eight people. I made an AI lab so that we can just learn about this thing. Everything, every day was a brand new day. So I told you the employees are cheaper. So I hired like eight guys out of the blue who knew nothing about AI. And their, their only job was to study one AI app every day and make videos about it so I can learn more about it. And that's, uh, we created a lab around it. And now they have created some products and everything around it also. So when I, when I heard what this clinical communication thing is, I first said, I think maybe one of my guys can actually make this. It's, it sounds really easy uh, because I've seen what the stuff is happening, what kind of products they can make and what, what can be done. So uh, since you don't want AI, that's out of the picture. But um, having well, said that, I, I, I will say, so let me, let me pause you there and, and get you to understand where my thought process is. So sure. I'm it, having a good time, by the way, having this coffee with you at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, my, uh, my idea of, of AI, now there is a use case for AI, very, very good use case for AI. And that is for the individual. So uh, the individual to test ideas and synthesize ideas uh, based on questions and, and training and learning. So the idea of AI for me, uh, the, the question that I always ask is, who is controlling who? You know, in, in what certain, in what situation, who is controlling who? So, for example, in business, if you've got, if you're training AI to replace those 300 people, and now it's doing that, is it the human controlling the business? Because now the AI knows everything about the business. Uh, or is it the machine controlling the business or the machine controlling the human? Because the business is really supposed to be for humans anyway, uh, it, you know, as a service. That's what it's supposed to be. But um, and, and the control of that uh, service is supposed to be done by humans, uh, basic supply and demand. But if it's now operated by robots, uh, is it the robot now that's controlling the human? that needed the service or is it the human that's controlling the robot? Um, I think that is the question that needs to be uh, really looked at methodically because I, I, uh, it, I, I've seen both sides of this story like you and uh, in, in the AI space, but um, one thing that like Elon Musk said, which is, hey, the day that we have singularity, a machine claims singularity with a human, it's over. It is over because now you don't know. You really don't know who's controlling who because, you know, uh, you, you've got the machine embedded into the human brain and is it controlling the human brain or is the brain controlling the machine? So, uh, it, it's just a, I don't think we intended to go in that direction and I don't want to see ever. I mean, it, it, it's against pretty much every religious belief out there, you know, in, in, in the, in the human world. So, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I, it, it may sound crazy, um, but as an engineer and as a scientist and, and even as a human, that's the question I really, uh, I don't want to answer. I don't want to see, uh, I don't want to see a machine and a human become singular. I just don't. I don't think we were built that way. Um and, and while we can use machines to uh, to help us, that's great. Yeah, synthesize my thoughts all day long. I I love to ask this thing questions. Chat GPT. Hey, uh, um, 
help me think of something that I didn't think of, you know, and, and usually it does. I mean, it, it really comes up with a whole bunch of details and stuff and there's metadata in all of that information that I get that I go through and I can, I can discern, Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I didn't think of that. You know, <laughs> I didn't think of that part of the idea and, uh, and, and it synthesizes that. So it's, it's great in that respect, but, uh, not for, uh, I, I don't think it, it should be doing our jobs for us, which is why I'm very turned on with your idea of giving the opportunity to not only learn business, because that's great. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic uh, from from a skill a skill learning perspective. I would much rather teach humans what I know what comes from my brain and transfer that to their brain, not, not a machine. Um, well, in that case, you can become a teacher at my school. You can just give half an hour a week, two hours a week, whatever you want to give to these kids. These are real human beings. They're not robots. They come from a very poor background family, but I've trained them for the last six months to use computers and smartphones and taught them English. And now the way they learn English is by speaking to Americans and English people. Uh, we need more volunteers who can just chit chat with them and talk about life and singularity, whatever that is, and you know, all that <laughs> cool stuff at, and becoming a cyborg and what is Black Mirror and all that stuff. We need those people. And I would really appreciate if you could talk to them and just, you know, I would be happy to introduce them i mean you have a 12 year old daughter and all these kids are 12 year old 13 year old kids and your daughter can talk with them and you know we do it everything publicly so that people can monitor them and we don't you know we don't do it in closed rooms that's for that reason but it's a it's a very cool school it's a very cool project i'm loving it uh it's i was talking to my wife today about this you know, the whole education system, we were talking about, what were we talking about? We were talking about something, yeah, I mean, I was talking to somebody who is a teacher, a very famous teacher now in Pakistan for e-commerce, and he was like, people email me, people message me and ask me how to come to your office. Why don't they just go to the website and study and, and just click on the Google map and just come? And... And then I asked, and I told the answer was, if you go to China and you meet a person who has done an MBA, do you think he would know how to say, hello, how are you? Lovely to meet you. No, they are not taught basic English. Similarly, our schools are not teaching how do hormones work. They're not teaching how to interact with human beings. How do you interact in a 21st century with a person inside inside minecraft inside facebook they don't know how to use uh chat gpt whatever so once you have chat gpt why do you need to learn biology why do you need to learn chemistry anymore why do you need to learn or memorize stuff so so i have thrown away everything and i'm going back to as elon says back to first principle thinking and we are redesigning the whole education system based on if you have chat GPT, how would you make a school? All of a sudden, how would you make a new school? How would you imagine? How would you imagine it? It's and it's impossible to imagine for the people who have, who have been teaching for all their life because they have never experienced anything like this. So, right. so we are trying to create a very very different kind of school. Where, teach, where the kids are able to learn anything and they are able to solve the world world big problems. And that's how I started. But then I ended up buying a school in a slum and their biggest problem was money. So now I have, I promised their parents that, okay, I'll help your kids earn at least $500 a month, which is, which is not a lot of money for if somebody goes to and works at McDonald's part-time, right? So why, why does it have to be difficult for a smart kid online to earn $500 a month. So I gave this challenge to myself that I will teach them $500 a month. And if once they 
do that, then I'll start charging them fees. For now, it's a free school. And then once they earn 500 bucks a month, they have to pay me 100 bucks in school fees. And that's what the model of the school is for earning. Oh, and wow. then uh, these kids sure. did not have a cell phone. These kids never had a laptop in their life. So I had to create a new project where it's called One Laptop per Pakistani. So yeah. I started giving laptops for four bucks a month uh, so that these kids can do it. And now these kids can't afford four bucks. So I'm paying them four bucks <laughs> so that they can buy the laptop. <laughs> uh, and then it's an interesting model. And the some, some kids have become really phenomenal when you talk to them. They're not affluent. They're not fluent in English. Uh, they have never watched Star Trek. So I started showing them Star Trek uh, in the school. And then, um, you know, like bringing them up as a, as a, as a global citizen. It's, it's a very challenging, interesting, different way of thinking. So this week we're had, having we're putting in a slide, you know, the Google slide where you can go from one floor to another. We're putting that in a school. Oh wow! Um, yeah, and we have a we have a room where we're building now a room which will look like a Star Trek ship. So you're like going to the room and you're like the whole classroom is like the what's that you know the the where you know Captain Clerk and everybody's sitting. The bridge, yeah, the, the classroom would look like a bridge. <laughs> We're doing all kind of weirdo stuff, and people are in shock. What am I doing? And they don't get it, and especially because, it's again, it's a slum area. Poor people are very poor. They don't really get it. But it's a very interesting project, um, and I, I have made it totally open source. I encourage people to come and copy whatever they want to copy from the school, idea, ideology, methodology, whatever. And, and the way we teach is through TED Talks. So, for example, when, when we induct a child, we give them 100 problems that you have to pick one problem, and we will help you solve this problem in the next 10 years. You can pick up water, you can pick up electricity, you can pick up solar, whatever. And then the way you learn is say you, are a, you select water, so we will change your last name. Now we will become Stephen Waterwala. So you're Stephen, like, Watersmith. So now, every day you come in and you make one video using help of ChatGPT. Uh, you make a video and you understand a water issue, how it works, blah, blah, blah. Second, you watch a TED Talk every day on water only. And then you make a video about what you learned from TED Talk. And you say, hey, Mr. Stephen Lane, I watched your TED Talk. I learned this from your video. Would you be willing to give me half an hour interview so I can learn more from you. So you build networks and communication with, with the global mind of water. And I think if you keep on doing this 1,200 times, the kid will become like a phenomenal, like Malala or Greta Thunberg of that field. And then they can actually solve this problem. So that's, that's so far we have covered it. Um, <laughs> it's a, huh? I said I love it. I love it. Oh. Yeah, and 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 as I said, you know, we so I give them riddles. Sometimes I give them a task where, okay, tell me what is microbiome and how does it perform. And these are like twelve-year-old kids. They go in, they they go to ChatGPT, they ask the question, then they make me a video with the AI voice and everything. Microbiome does this, blah blah blah. blah. Oh, oh, okay. Now you explain it to me in your own language. Okay, so that is difficult. Okay, take an hour more. Then. They go to ChatGPT, explain it to me like I'm seven, and explain it in Urdu. Then, then again, ChatGPT goes in and explain it to them. So it's it's pretty cool that these kids are able to adapt and and do like this. Right. So it's a very I'm very excited about this. If it works, I mean, if if it's it's, it's working, but it when it spreads, we can disrupt the stupid school system we had forever, where we doesn't we don't really. We don't really learn anything which we need today. We need to we need right. to teach kids for 2030, 2040, and the kids are preparing them for 1900 something. I don't know what that year is, but right. yeah. So that's what keeps me occupied. And uh, uh, and then this there's this crisis of uh, money all of a sudden in the country where people are educated. They have internet, they have computers, but there's they've just never worked online. And they're just not 
they're not looking for remote jobs. And I'm like, why on earth? Why don't you work online? I mean, dude, you're so smart. You work hard. Why don't you just switch your company to a company overseas? How would right. just like your, your first question, how would we get the money? How would, would this happen? How would this happen? They're like too scared to even try it. And that's 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 my fight against the the fear. You know, it's all fear of what will happen, what will happen, what will happen. They don't even try it. So Well, you you bring up a very important uh part of I it. I did not know you're a philosopher, by the way. Go uh, for it. Uh, well, all right. So just a little background. Um, you may know, if you know Greg Merriweather, uh, Greg Greg and I get into these deep talks because uh, he was the actual, he, him and Jeremy were actually the ones that trained me on asterisk. So uh, back in the early days, you know, back in like 2003, 2000. Uh, around two, yeah, 2002, 2003, uh, while they're trying to launch new phone and, and take this voice over IP idea out from the, uh, the, the, the digital TDM world and, and put it into uh, TCP IP on the internet, um, we did a lot of, we, we, we did a lot of deep thinking then. And uh, um, it, that kind of led to uh, uh, me trying to understand my background, which is um, so my family is uh, they're all Freemasons and, you know, fraternity folks, you know, they, so uh, that was how they were educated. They were, they were taught by other people, um, not by religion or anything. They were taught by other people within the fraternity that shared, that was their way of sharing knowledge. And it still is. I mean, you know, if you, if you look at the fraternities today, m most of all of them own medical systems, you know, because they're, uh, they're sharing the medical knowledge only within the, the, the fraternity the group that runs the hospital. So um, it's, it's very, uh, I wouldn't say, I don't know as far as going as, 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 as going as far as philosophical, more or less uh, knowing how they learned to uplift uh, civilization to where we are today. Okay. And um, Greg and I, you know, we, we talk about that too, because he's like, "Oh, well, I'm a Shriner myself," you know, and he's like telling me all the fraternities he's in, and uh, and I go, "Yeah," and, and I said to him, "You guys share, you know, we, we're you're sharing information. I mean, you learned. If it wasn't for Jeremy, uh, he probably would have never even gotten into the 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 asterisk stuff. Um, Jeremy, knowing you know all the other uh, community developers." Uh, including Mark, uh, probably would have never gotten into asterisk. But, you know, that was the, the asterisk community was like the fraternity, you know, if you think about it. And uh, uh, the only way you could learn it, because there wasn't real documentation to like, or classes or certification or anything, you had to either understand the code yourself, or if you were smart enough, <laughs> or, uh, or talk to somebody who was in the project that would let you in. And uh, that's, that's, you know, essentially the world we live in today. If you're, if, if you want to be a part of a civilization, I mean, you know, I, I, I tell my, teach my uh, daughter this, it's more about situational awareness and self-awareness than it is ever anything else. So if you know yourself, and you know your surroundings, you'll survive. You'll know how to go and and uh, grow food. You know, you'll learn. You'll learn by experimenting. Go go plant a seed. Go. Um, you know, we have a garden in the backyard. My 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 wife is uh, teaching, trying to teach her. You know, get out there and go plant some plants and uh, 
they like to grow peppers, you know, the, the uh, peppers. So um, she's, she's doing that and, and learning how to grow stuff. The other thing is, uh, which she never would have had the opportunity to do, because it, it, the, the, the idea never came, which was uh, like play the violin. You know, uh, she heard somebody say, hey, we, um, at school, well, we pulled her out of school, but she, when she was going to school, we're homeschooling her now. But when she went into the sixth grade, uh, they said, hey, we offer violin classes. And she goes, I, I love that idea. So she gets in the violin class. She starts doing it for her sixth grade year. And then uh, we pull her out of school and she's going to go to home doing homeschool. So now we had to find, uh, you know, uh, somebody who was uh, a violin, a violinist. Actually, we found a, one music teacher who is and she's teaching her, you know, hands on. And she's even taught her how to read music, which the school didn't even teach her. <laughs> They just had to hold the violin and, you know, play certain notes and whatever. And uh, the kids had to discover how to read the music on their own. You know, that so it would be like discovering a talent rather than having somebody give the idea of what uh, reading music actually looks like, you know, in their brain. And, and that's what this doctor does. She's, she's, I forget what she's got a PhD in, but um, she taught my daughter how to read the music and the notes they represent and the beats and, and all of that, like just went over and the whole scale. And anyway, it's very interesting because you, if you think about how that's mapped out, you know, and somebody else in, in, in let's say, an expert's head, you know, what their, what their mind map looks like, then you can learn anything. You can learn anything somebody else learns. If they, if they have that ability to map it out that way. So I think that's really what it comes down to. I'm not much of a philosopher. I'm more of a, uh, what makes logical sense, you know, uh, for you, for, even the smartest human to understand because even the smartest human can understand things at their most simplistic form. And, and I think that's really what it comes down to. So uh, not much of a philosopher or over than a, an engineer, a, an engineer at heart <laughs> for sure. Um, well, but, it was, um, do you want a, I'm getting kind of tiredish. It's 3.30 no. in the morning. And uh, it was amazing talking to you uh, and catching up. I wasn't expecting a brainly stimulus <laughs> conversation. Uh, but I'm very happy that we connected back. Drop me your number. I'll save it. Text you my number. I do plan to come over this month or next month. So maybe you can hang out. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, if you can spare time since your daughter is uh, homeschooled, maybe if you want us, our teachers, to connect with her, talk with her, talk to our teachers, um, it'll be amazing for your daughter maybe to join our school online and study with these kids. Uh, I One thing you can help me think about is connect me with these kids to more kids because they can... I don't want them to stay Pakistani mindset. I want them to become global mindset. I want them to be friends with Singaporeans and Americans and Australians, like an international school. And you know, when you, yeah, when they when you're playing Minecraft or any game, you're no longer inside a country, right? You go over to to a global mindset. But when you come back outside Minecraft or you know any other game you're playing, you're now all of a sudden back to your reality. So, yeah. and also we're building a Minecraft room in our school. There's an educational version of Minecraft available so the kids can play. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of things. Uh, I was actually um, wishing that I could crack this code, how I can connect to schools in the U S and kids in the U S so that these kids can talk and connect and, 
talk like kids, like other kids, not adults, because now they're finding all adults and you, you don't want to hang out with adults all the time. You know, like you will become, I, you will become like me, boring person. When I was young, I was only friends with older people, like 10 year older than me, 30 years older than me. I had no real friends. And today I have no real friends because, you know, I never had friends in school. Uh, it was so boring for me to be friends with them. They were just talking about everyday stuff. And I was like, let's do a better world or whatever. Right. So I'm with you, brother. I am. I am. Uh, I, I, I've always had good friends. That's the thing. That's the difference with me was I've always had good friends, but um, I grew up in a, uh, a very cosmopolitan uh, area. I, I grew up in, in South Florida. So, uh, my wife is from Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, uh, when she moved up here, uh, she just she she loves the ability to to free think because she has that 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 uh, freedom here, and it's it's quite phenomenal to have that that freedom of thought uh, because I tell you some of the conversations that we we have about. Uh, issues that are going on in this country right now um uh, will i mean you know th this is the kind of stuff that that makes it to uh the highest levels of of uh uh collegiate mindsets you know university mindsets and uh uh leadership mindsets but um uh yeah um i'm i i'm right there with you i I love to teach. I would love to expand and, and share knowledge as a human to other humans. Like I said, I'm not so much into training bots. <laughs> so uh, that that's the thing about me. Um, you know, uh, it. I always go back to the idea of, um, you know, I told my wife, we have a small family. And then we have friends who have large families. And I said, and if you look at the, the uh, you know, like, like their lifestyle, a large family, uh, life pers person who has a large family, their lifestyle, and a person in, in us having a small family, much, much different. I mean, it's so different. But uh, we with the small families are envious of those with the large families because we have so many roles that we could fulfill the lives of, you know, uh, with the with the thoughts that that we have, you know, um, that we could hand down to our children, and let them uh, become the custodians of of whatever it is that we build, and and you know, whatever manifests out of this life, anyway. I think you know where I'm going with this because uh, well if you're if you and your wife would take our children 45 of them at the moment <laughs> uh, to be part of your family we would be very honored you can take them one hour a day one hour a week one hour a month part-time uh, family full-time family whatever they're just joyous amazing young kids and they will uh, be they're very loving they're very very giving um uh, young young human beings i'm very blessed um to have found them to to work with them it's it's a joy i did not know there's so much joy in in hanging out with these kids it's just phenomenal to could see them grow see them learn see them create it's just oh it's just uh amazing it's very very interesting right uh, and I, hope, I hope you have the same joy and um I will introduce you to a couple and you can just chit chat with them for, for half an hour and see how it goes. Okay. And then, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And then think on the, um, the remote job thing, uh, Definitely. and just bring me and we can do another session like this. It, it, it's very, I'm very happy to have had this conversation. I needed the, um, uh, I needed the feedback loop. Um, to be there so that you can just you know we can just brainstorm this uh this through this so thank you so much for for that 
Um, I don't know who is this uh, gentleman, Greg uh, Merriweather. I would love to connect. Oh, yeah. Can connect with me. Um, yeah. And um, I, I disconnected myself from the VoIP industry a long time ago because I haven't been to the office even for a couple of years. I just don't go there. It doesn't. I I enjoy creation. I don't. I don't enjoy running things. So, right. The, the company's running fine. I get my check every month. Sometimes, sometimes I don't. But they, at least they pay my bills. So <laughs> I don't have big demands. Uh, but yeah, um, if you know somebody who can gulp the company over, that'll be great because I can free up some cash that way and invest more in the school uh, where I'm enjoying. Um, a, a lot. Uh, if there is one thing I would have kind of regretted is why didn't I open this 25 years ago? Right. But maybe I did not really know anything 25 years ago to teach them even. But right. Who, yeah. Amazing. And yes, I do have somebody that I could uh, make introductions to you with uh, regarding that, uh, th that business idea. Um and uh, yeah, I, I do want to definitely connect more with you. So uh, expect you can expect more connect contact from me here in the in the coming days. No problem. As long as we're live, I'm happy to do it. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. Steve. Yeah, thank you. All right. Lots Thanks of hearts. So Take care. Right. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.